Hey guys, welcome back to Hemlock Ridge. Glad you could join. It is uh, one of the coldest days this year, about 20 degrees outside, uh, starting to come up to temperature here in the cabin. Pretty nice. Uh, a little bit of snow last night, definitely cold. Going to be really cold tonight, about uh, just about single digits. So one of the things I wanted to talk about today is three things you can do to make your solar system a little bit more efficient. If you didn't see my last video, I spent some time talking about how you can put together an inexpensive solar powered system for your cabin, shed, whatever it might be, only for a few hundred dollars. Much less than one of those solar generators that you might buy in the store, but works off of the same principles. I put the link in the description if you want to start there, check it out. I'll show you how from start to finish you could put together uh, some solar power for lights, TV, charging phones, whatever it might be. I want to talk a little bit though, if you want to make some improvements about three things you can do uh, to make your solar powered system a little bit more efficient. First, I think it might be helpful if you're not completely familiar with solar to think about how the system works and how the components work together. I like to almost liken it to something that we are familiar with, the fuel in your car. So think about it, with both systems we have an energy source. In your car, it's fossil fuels, it's gasoline. In your cabin or your off-grid uh, property, it's going to be the sunlight. And then you need a way to capture that. So it's already captured for you at the gas station. It's a gas pump. It's solar panels on your roof or on your property that's going to capture that energy and harness it. So after you capture that energy, the next thing you need to do is kind of regulate that energy, right? At the gas station, the gas pump shuts off when your tank is full. It automatically detects pressure, detects the fuel starting to come up. Um, the tube into the gas tank and it shuts off the pump. Same thing in a solar system, you need a charge controller. That charge controller is going to tell when your batteries are approaching their full status and it's going to shut off the charging so that you don't overcharge your batteries. After the solar charger, you need somewhere to store that energy, right? And in, in the car, that's the gas tank. In the solar setup, it's your battery bank. And so based on the amount of energy you want to store, obviously you're going to need a bigger tank. If you want to go farther between Phillips and your car, you, right, you get a really big gas tank. If you want to go farther between recharging and have more power uh, stored in your bank, you're going to need additional batteries, right? And so that's as simple as that. And then the last thing in the setup is how do you take that energy and actually use it? Well, in your vehicle, you've got a fuel pump and you've got fuel injectors and, and takes that energy out of the gas tank, right, and helps power your combustion engine. Um, in a solar system or a solar setup, I should say, you're going to take that energy that's stored in the batteries and you're either going to pull it directly through 12 volt or you're going to run it into an inverter and the inverter is going to take that energy and it's going to uh, basically turn it into 120 volts or alternating current, which is what you have in your household to run AC appliances. So really, again, if you think about a vehicle and a solar powered setup, they're not that much different from how energy gets captured, it gets regulated, it gets stored, and then it gets turned into um, another uh, function or another piece of energy. Here's the thing though, at each one of those points, whether it's through capturing, whether it's through converting it, there is the opportunity for waste and inefficiency. And so here's three things that you can do to make sure your solar system is a little bit more efficient, or like me, I'm gonna do some upgrades to uh, make my system a little bit more efficient as well too. So first, your solar panels. I put my solar panels on the roof because I wanted them out of sight. I like the rural nature of the property. I didn't want a big panel farm um, on the ground. The problem with that, as you can see, is I get a lot of snow. Right now, you can't even see those solar panels. They're covered with a thin layer of snow and that's all it takes to have uh, you know, a major drop in efficiency. I'm actually still getting a little bit of charging through the snow right now, but as that, charge, as that snow gets a little bit heavier, I'm not gonna be able to generate any energy, which means I either have to get up on the roof, or clear the panels off. So one recommendation is have some of your panels on the ground in an array. You can easily clean them off if you get snow. Um, additionally, you could get an array where you can actually move it. Some have pole mounts and things like that where you can swing the whole array. And if you really want to, um, you know, throughout the day, move your array to get more direct sunlight, you'd have that option as well, too. Number two, the charge controller. 
if you remember from my last video, um, I purchased a very inexpensive, what's known as a, a PWM, a pulse wave modulation controller, very inexpensive. The problem with these controllers is they're only about 75% efficient at converting the energy from the solar panels into stored energy in your batteries. So nearly 25% of that energy that you're collecting is wasted. And that's for a number of reasons. Uh, there are better controllers that use a slightly different technology called MPPT. Uh, I'll put a link to a few of them in the description below. Um, if you're interested in them, I'm gonna upgrade to one shortly. And an MPPT controller can be anywhere from 95 to almost 99% efficient. So right there, just by having a better controller, you're gonna increase the amount of energy that you're able to harness from the sun by close to 20 to 25%. And the reason it does that is it's able to adjust the voltages and things like that, right? So when the voltage is lower, it steps it up so that the battery can still store and, and things of that nature and, and, the, and the energy doesn't get wasted. So it's much more efficient at taking that energy from the solar panel on cloudy days, on uh, you know days when there's other obstructions on the solar panel and still converting it into energy that can be stored. And then the third thing is your inverter. Now, um, there's two things to look at with an inverter. Again, I bought an inexpensive inverter. I'm not living here full time. It suits my needs. It may suit your needs too if you just got a shed or a workshop and you want some power in it. Um, the problem with the inverter though is the inverter can also be very inefficient at converting DC, 12 volt DC, right, which is in your batteries, to AC. This particular inverter is only about 81% efficient at doing that. So now if you remember, I've got a pulse wave modulation or PWM charge controller that's only about 75% efficient. I've got an inverter that's only about 81% efficient. So roughly about 45% of the energy I'm collecting from those solar panels never makes it to my AC appliances when I'm using an inverter. Nearly half is wasted, right? So that's huge. So you can buy more expensive inverters that are more efficient at converting DC to AC and get that efficiency rating up. The other thing you got to look at is when your inverter's on, it actually has standby draw. So even if there's no load, there's no nothing plugged into it, your inverter, if it's turned on, is drawing power from your batteries. And this particular inverter draws about half an amp. Um, again, there are some that are more efficient than that. So again, these little gremlins, these energy gremlins, right, either through inefficiency or standby draw, are going to draw down your power, you know, and, and you're going to lose what's in that battery bank faster. So again, three things, solar panel placement, uh, upgrade to a, a, a better charge controller, and look at the specs on your inverter. Those three things alone, if you do nothing else, are gonna help you get more efficiency out of your system. Of course, there's other things you can do. You could add more panels, right? So you have the ability to capture more of that energy. You can add more batteries, so you have the ability to store more of that energy. And there are a whole bunch of other things, which I don't pretend to be an expert on, where you can actually step up the voltage of your batteries by, you know, uh, putting them together so they're 24 volts instead of 12 volts, which is going to help, um, you know, with voltage loss and being able to transfer the power longer distances and things like that. I'm not going to get into that level of detail. I'll leave that for the pros. But hopefully these are some easy tips that you can use to better understand and uh, optimize your solar panels and your solar system for your off-grid cabin, shed, or project. Wow, so it is uh, definitely cold out today. Uh, if you can hear really in the distance, I actually have my generator running today to help charge my batteries up because um, we haven't had any sun here in, in almost a month. Hard to believe, but this time of year, it just gets really snowy and really cloudy. So uh, that's a whole other thing is you can have a um, charger um, sized appropriately for your batteries so that if you do turn on your generator to help power your off-grid cabin, it's going to charge your batteries at the same time. So I'm going to go out. i got to do a little bit of clearing. Uh, I'm going to hike around a little bit. And uh, hopefully more videos coming soon. But thanks a lot for tuning in. And always hope to see you back here next time on Hemlock Ridge. Mm -hmm.